Yeah, people, we did not have ice cream at home. <laughs> no. My parents are getting older. They're doing older, crazy parent things. My dad, he was one of the cheapest guys I know. Anyone here have a cheap parent? Yeah, right. All right, all right, to be fair, to be fair, my dad was kind of cheap. He was the kind of cheap that when I used to say, hey, dad, can we stop for ice cream after Little League Baseball would say, uh, uh, we don't need to stop for ice cream. We have ice cream at home. <laughs> yeah, people, we did not have ice cream at home. <laughs> What we had was we had an old refrigerator that froze the milk on the top shelf. <laughs> yeah, if you throw in some Nestle Quick Boy and chip at it with the hammer, you'll have ice cream. Yeah. My dad, he's in his 70s though. In his 70s, he went out and bought a $68,000 Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, he paid cash for it. So now I know why we couldn't stop for ice cream all those years. Thank you. It's cool, it's cool, yeah. No, my, my dad, like I said, he's in his 70s. And you know what those Lincolns are? They're these great big behemoths of a vehicle. They got this big screen TV and the dashboard. They got a camera on the back. And I said, well, that's great, Dad. Now you can watch all the stuff you're going to back over. <laughs> <laughs> he did it, too. I knew it was coming. We're sitting at my parents' house at Christmas dinner. My dad eats like he always does real fast. He jumps up. He goes running out to the garage. I hear this truck fire up, and the next sound that I heard was crunch, crunch, crunch. Yeah, I went running out to the garage, and I looked, and there underneath the axle of this truck was the brand-new Barbie big wheel power wheel thing that he had just bought his granddaughter for Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, I said, Dad, did you not just see that big wheel, power wheel thing on that big screen TV inside your dashboard? And he goes, well, well, yeah, but you know me, I don't believe everything I see on TV. <laughs> that was a long way to go for a joke, ma'am, and you shook your head, but that's okay. He clapped, so I like him better than you right now. <laughs> But you can come around, we'll get to that in a minute, right? I still like her, but she's got on the curve. We're grading that way right now. <laughs> I'm excited I'm in Utah, man. I did something in Utah I've always wanted to do. I saw the Mormon Tabernacle Choir sing, right? Aren't they awesome? Yeah, yeah they are amazing, amazing voices. I do not have an amazing voice. As a matter of fact, I don't even sing in church. People ask me, Chris, why don't you sing in church? I said, not only do I not sing well, but every time I find my place in the hymnal, it says refrain. <laughs> Thank you, my mom likes that joke. <laughs> no, this is great. He said, my name is Chris Young, and I do come to you from that place in Michigan none of us want to end up, right? Go, he's, go Lions. Nobody wants to go Lions, right? It's okay, sir, you tell me to go there. That's on my way home. It's fine. Start things off. I am a parent. Do we have any parents in the audience? Cool. There's like 180 people here, and nine people will admit to their kids on a Saturday night. <laughs> They're like, we paid for the sitter, dude. You're here to make us laugh. Do it, right? <laughs> No, I have kids. This was a long winter in the Midwest. In the Midwest, I know we get snow out here and things like that. Snow's awesome, but in the Midwest, we had like 4,000 snow days. I'm not kidding. Every day was a snow day, right, sir? Yeah, after about 30 of them, because I work in schools too, I said to my kids, I told my daughter, I said, you know, honey, Dad loves you. He will always love you, but I think it's time that you and I start seeing some other kids. <laughs> 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 
It's okay, right? They're there too. It's cool though, I'm a parent. I have kids, but I have parents. How many people in here have parents? <laughs> 15 this time. 15 will admit to their parents. They're going, dude, it is not Sunday yet. We don't have to go pick them up. Take them to church. <laughs> Take them out to eat at Bob Evans. <laughs> then get them back before Jeopardy or something comes on, right? Yeah, I don't know. I have parents. They're getting older, and I love my parents to death, so don't get me wrong. I, they, I cleared this with them. They said I could make as much fun of them as I want as long as it gets them a better nursing home someday. <laughs> yeah, people, I am not in Vegas. I am in Provo, Utah tonight. So unless they don't like sleeping in a minivan, they better get to step it. <laughs> No, my parents, though, they're getting older. They're doing the older parent things, right? Anyone have older parents that you're worried about? <laughs> you people? Yeah. yeah. We have this attorney, and he comes to me. He goes, you know, Mr. Young, he goes, I don't want to scare you, but you are now the executor on their will. Say something happens to him, you're going to be the one that gets the call from the hospital or, say, the police. And I, am thinking, and I said, police, obviously you've seen my parents, sir. <laughs> but I had that mom. I had that mom. She told me, she'd say, you know, Christopher, I don't care what you're doing, who you're doing it with, as long as you are safe, and as long as you never call me from jail, because I am going to pretend like I don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah, that's redeeming, isn't it? Thanks, mom, right? <laughs> Well, people, I lived up to my end of the bargain. I never went to jail. Now, one night at college, my roommate, who couldn't run as fast as me, <laughs> he, he went to jail. When I said cops and he said what, that was too long of a time not to start running. <laughs> You guys are great already, man. That's awesome. Thank you. So anyways, I am sitting at home on a rare Friday night where I don't have a show. I'm sitting at home and my phone rings. It says, ring, 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 Wayne County Sheriff's Department. And I'm sitting there thinking, who could this be? This can't be my wife. She's home with me tonight. She's not out with her boyfriend. <laughs> Long as she pays her half of the mortgage, sir, I don't question. <laughs> you guys are making me laugh. Thank you. Thank you. Great. It's great, man. So I pick up the phone and I hear, hello, Mr. Young, this is Officer Johnson here with the Wayne County Sheriff's Department. I have your mom here. <laughs> and I am thinking, mom, officer, I don't have a mom. Click. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> 20 seconds later, that phone rings again. Ring, 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 ring. Wayne County Sheriff's Department. I pick up the phone and I hear, ha, 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 uh, Mr. Young, this is Officer Johnson, yeah, with the Wayne County Sheriff's Department. Uh, your mother tells me you're a comedian. I don't think you're as funny right now as you do. <laughs> and I hear my mom across the table going, I told him don't quit his day job. He isn't funny. <laughs> He goes, Mr. Young, I have your mom here tonight. And he goes, I would like to get rid of her. <laughs> and I am thinking, now, officer, you are the one speaking my language, man. <laughs> I'm the executor. You have a gun and taser, dude. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Man, I don't know if you guys can see this up here, but these lights are hot. <laughs> I feel like I'm on one of those rotisseries you see at a restaurant. <laughs> oh, start, start turning evenly, right? 
<laughs> if I start to catch on fire up here, sir, you're gonna let me know he's shaking his head going, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure he will. They'll say, I'll start to catch on fire and they'll say, what happened on Saturday night at the dry bar tape? And he goes, I don't know, but some fat dude caught on fire on stage. <laughs> now that was worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> <laughs> they're clapping for me catching on fire. That's what they're doing. <laughs> Jokes, no, but if he's going to catch on fire, we will clap. <laughs> cool, man. This is, this is great. Now, my, my dad, he's doing crazy things. I'm even more concerned about my mom, and I warned you about her. Since my mom has retired, my mom has now joined a gang. <laughs> No, my mom's joined a gang. She now has a silk jacket. It's got letters on the cro all across the back of it. And she's got a great big gold and silver emblem on the back of her car that says something like, A-A-R-P, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what the motto of the A-A-R-P is, but I'm sure it's something like, we're old, we're bold, we will not stand our coffee cold. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're rich, and now we go to Florida during the winter to spend our kids' inheritance. Yeah, that's a lot more funny to those people right now than it really is to me. But my parents, in the last couple of years, they kind of became full-time snowbirds. You guys know what the definition of a snowbird is, don't you? It's someone that moves from a cold climate to a warm climate during the, excuse me, during the winter time only to call back up here every day and ask me what the weather's like. <laughs> Is it true, sir? I get that call, it's about 6.40 every morning. It's always ring, 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 and it says Sarasota, Florida. And I gotta pick the phone up because this might be the day I get to cash that inheritance in. <laughs> Yeah, and I always say something stupid. I say, cash call from Florida. And it's always my mom, no, 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 idiot, still not funny. Don't quit your day job, go to work. It's just your mom, I'm calling to see what the weather's like in Michigan today. I said, what's the weather like in Michigan, mom? You guys still have that big screen TV down there in your condo? Yeah, and you still watch the weather channel from like four in the morning till midnight every night? Yes, yeah, so about every 15 minutes, you're gonna get to know what the weather's like here in Michigan. You see that big swath of pink and white and blue covering the whole mitten state that should just say, crap? <laughs> yeah, that's what the weather's gonna be like for the next three or four months. That is why you left. But I'm stupid, I always say this. I say, you don't wanna know the answer, Chris. You don't wanna know the answer, but I'm just being nice and I say, so, what's the weather like in Florida? And she goes, oh, oh, it got cold down here last night. It got down into the 40s. Your dad turned the heat on. I wore my long nightgown and I wore socks to bed. <laughs> yeah, I said, thank you, mom, for telling me you wore your long nightgown to bed because that time you wore your short nightgown to breakfast. <laughs> I still need therapy for that. <laughs> Cool, you don't have to applaud for that. Someone's got to do some ironing, is all I got to say. <laughs> cool, man, this is awesome. It's fun. No, my parents, <laughs> my parents, they're getting older. And these people, now that I became a parent myself, they came these super evil villains called grandparents, right? The kind of people that never did anything wrong. Now they want to give me parenting advice. Yeah, people look at me. These aren't people that should be giving anyone any advice for anything. <laughs> My dad will just say stupid things. He'll say, uh, uh, hey boy, come over here for a minute. Let me tell you something. He goes, do you know what you need to tell your kids to do when they are riding in the back of an open air pickup truck down the highway? And I am thinking, dad, because of idiots like you, we can no longer do that stuff. 
And he'll say, well, you, you need to tell them to watch out for rocks because the bridges are collapsing. That's sound advice there, genius, right? <laughs> just like he would do. He'd be driving one hand and put that little McDonald's sliding window open and yell, hey, hey, you kids, be safe back there. And then he would flick his cigarette out and we'd have to jump out of the way. And I grew up on a farm, so there's a lot of times we had hay in the back of our truck. Yeah, and you haven't lived till you had to stomp out a fire going down the expressway. <laughs> My dad, he just says stupid things. My mom has gotten vindictive. My mom will now start a sentence with, you know, I don't mean to overstep my bounds here. <laughs> yeah, I said, uh, uh, Mom, if you have to start the sentence with, I don't mean to overstep my bounds here, there's a good chance you should just shut up right now. <laughs> right? You guys clapping at that table? You got that going on over there, right? <laughs> She's your mom. She's never going to shut up. You know that, right? She comes to me one day. She comes to me and she goes, you know, Christopher, you know, Christopher, I don't mean to overstep my bounds here. And I'm thinking, well, here we go. She goes, I just heard this. I just heard. I'm thinking you've either watched or read something on TV again, right? She goes, I just heard if you want to give your kids some meaningful discipline. I mean meaningful discipline. I heard you should never, ever, ever smack them on the behind whatsoever. You shouldn't smack them. She goes, no, what I heard you should do is you should just give them some good positive reinforcement. And I am thinking positive reinforcement, really? We had positive reinforcement when I was a kid. It went a little something like if I messed up, I was positive. My dad was coming home from work. <laughs> to kick me in my butt, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was the day before cell phones or instant gratification and things like that, right? My mom couldn't interrupt my dad at work. They had to page the whole plan. And he was a millwright. And if they woke him up from his nap, someone was getting it when he got home from work. So anyways, my mom just did the mom threat things and you wait till your father gets home, all that stuff, but right? So I would keep it up and I knew my mom got mad because she quit talking to me. So I knew I was in trouble that day, right? Yeah, right? So I knew that my dad got home from work at 4.10 every day. At 4.09, I went somewhere and I hid in my house. <laughs> Yeah, it was about 10 or 15 minutes after my dad had got home from work and no one had come to find me yet. Yeah, little did I know, my mom never told my dad that I was in trouble that day. She was just enjoying 10 or 15 minutes of peace and quiet. People that have kids or had kids, is there anywhere in your house that you can hide that your kids can't find you in a half a second? <laughs> Nowhere. I can't find my kids in my house. I can come in, yell at them for the top of my lungs. I can't find them, don't know where they are. So you know what happens now, though? I think they can't hear me. But the time that I think they're asleep and I pop a soda, suddenly they're all ears. <laughs> Dad, Dad, what do you got? <laughs> right? So I can't find my kids in my house. But do you know now where I go in my house, if I want to find my kids where I go, I just go to the bathroom and no sooner does my butt touch that toilet seat <laughs> and they find me. you clap at that one? Thank you. You guys know how it is, right? 
at my house, it's almost like a horror movie. <laughs> I'll get home from work and I'll come run in there and find that little half bathroom that's got all my good catalogs and stuff. And I'll go run and sit down. And no sooner does my butt, like I said, touch that toilet seat and I hear it, it starts down at the end of the hallway. It's this. <laughs> And I'm sitting there with my pants around my ankles, my eyes are darting. I'm trying to control my breathing, doing that. And at my house, I have wood floors and my daughters are never not wearing like these hard, plastic Barbie clip-clop shoes <laughs> up and down my wood floors and I hear her coming it's this horrible clip-clop, 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 clip-clop and she's always singing something stupid all the time <laughs> and I hear her coming and she's singing baby shark doo 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 baby shark doo 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 and I'm sitting there on the toilet trying not to get wrapped and go daddy shark doo 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 <laughs> So anyways, I hear this clip-clop, 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 and it stops right in front of that bathroom door. And I get that piercing. Daddy? Daddy, are you in there going potty? Because I have to go potty. And I am thinking, your dad just raced home from work, so he didn't go to the bathroom in his car. And then have to burn it on the side of the road somewhere and explain to your mom and the rest of us why we gotta go car shopping today. Cause you've all seen that, haven't you? You'll be driving down the road, sir, and you'll come up on this car that's just all burnt out. It looks like a barbecue. And I think, was that a dude that did not make it home to his bathroom? and just decided I'm gonna spare myself the embarrassment and torch this thing. <laughs> so anyways, I make it home and I'm sitting there and I get this, Daddy, I have to go potty. And I am thinking there are two other bathrooms in this house. You can't go to one of them? But people, I was quiet. I thought if I can be quiet enough, maybe she'll just move on and I can finish what I needed to start. So I'm sitting there and I don't hear anything for a minute. And I think I'm in the clear. And all of a sudden though, I hear some rustling. And I look and here underneath the gap, underneath the bathroom door comes this plastic Barbie head shoved underneath there. Head all caved in, Barbie looking like, and I'm looking down at Barbie thinking, well, don't you judge me, Barbie. <laughs> yes, Barbie, you live in a dream house. But I don't know if you know this, Barbie, but you are naked, Barbie, watching a grown man go to the bathroom. <laughs> and this is at the point where my daughter says, Daddy, I am opening this bathroom door. And that's when I stuck my foot against the door and I said, do not open this bathroom door because I only have enough money for therapy for Barbie, not you included. <laughs> but I hear this a lot now. I hear this a lot from people. People always tell me, people say, oh, you gotta watch out for kids nowadays. These kids are so much worse than when we were kids. I don't think that kids are any worse. Do you guys think that kids are any worse? Yeah, a few of them are going, yeah. <laughs> man, have you seen them? They got their pants pulled way down. You can see their underwear in the crack of their butt hang out half the time. They got holes poked all through their face if they ever sneeze with a soda in their mouth. <laughs> it looked like a launch sprinkler went off somewhere. myself, I don't think that kids are any worse. I just think that kids don't do good, wholesome things anymore. Am I right? Kids don't do good, wholesome things. These kids nowadays, they will sit all day long 
in their rooms and play. They don't know what it's like to go outdoors and go sledding all day long with your foot jammed in a bread bag, <laughs> then jammed down inside of a boot. <laughs> A few of you people in here, you guys remember these wonder boots? <laughs> yeah, we wondered why our feet got frostbit, didn't we? <laughs> and sometimes my mom wouldn't even take that last piece of bread out of the bottom of the bag before she'd stick my foot in there. Be about noon, I'd come to the back door, mom, 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 can I come in for lunch? And she would say, now why don't you just stay out there and eat that sandwich that I packed for you? <laughs> <laughs> it's sick, but you're with me. I like you guys for that, I like you. <laughs> but we would, we'd be outdoors, sledding, skiing, throwing snowballs and rocks at cars all day long. <laughs> Tell you'd get that one guy, man, he would throw his car and park and jump out and chase us kids yelling, I'll catch you one of these days, you wait. And the only reason I remember that is I'm now the fat dude that couldn't catch those kids. <laughs> <sighs> Told you winter was bad in the Midwest. I had to get out of here this winter. I had to go on vacation. Anybody in this room ever been on a vacation? <laughs> I gotta ask that, man, because a few places I play, they're like, oh, no, dude, since they put that Walmart in town, <laughs> we don't have to go anywhere. We can get beef jerky and <laughs> suntan oil. <laughs> who, st who still uses suntan oil? <laughs> But I, I, I had to get out of here. I went to the islands. I went to a Caribbean island. Anyone ever been to a Caribbean island? <laughs> Woo, Yaman, Yaman. I went to Jamaica. And do you know what I found that the only thing that the people of Jamaica do fast is the one thing? Drive. Good God, that bus ride from the airport. <laughs> To the resort was white knuckle. My butt was puckered tight down to the seat of this bus. And I am sitting there and I am praying every way I know to God at this point. Why this bus driver, he's driving up and down hills and around corners and there's goats and mopeds and up this mountain road we go 3,000 feet up, there is no guardrail. And I look over and there is the ocean. And there was also a busload of people that weren't very good at praying. <laughs> you guys are with me, man. I love it. I love it. It's cool. <sighs> but why was it so? Anyways, we're on this bus and it pulls up to this beautiful Sandals Resort. Some guy, he comes up and pops me up off the seat and I'm walking around and everything is, oh, sit, man, relax, man, have a red stripe. I said, have a red stripe, dude. How about getting me my luggage so I can get rid of this brown stripe and I have it on the back of my underwear. <laughs> but while I was there, I tried scuba for the first time and I'm what the dive instructors kept referring to as Buoyant man? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you, dry bar, but I think that is a fat joke. <laughs> hey, Provo, you guys have been a lot of fun. My name's Chris Young. Thank you.